Hi guys, my name is Tamar Mizels, and today we're going to talk about the Israeli elections 2022. What are the main issues? We Israelis are going to vote on November 1st again. This is the fifth time we're voting in the past three years. And this wasn't always the case. And the reason this is happening, we must admit, has to do with Bibi Benjamin Netanyahu. There are four major issues that I wanted to talk about that Israelis are voting on. And the first one has to do with Bibi. So we'll get to that in a moment. So the issues we're going to talk about are relation to Bibi, politically, economics, and Jewish identity. These are the four issues that are standing at the heart of these elections. So the first one is Bibi. You have to admit that Bibi is the reason we are at a fifth election. Depending on if you like Bibi or don't like Bibi, and at this point he's been in office for many years, every Israeli has an opinion on Bibi. Depending on if you like him or don't will matter how you phrase it. Either Bibi is a corrupt person who just won't step down and is leading us from election to election to election, or these people that hate Bibi just won't sit with him and they keep causing us to go from election to election to election because the Israeli system needs the coalition to have 61 seats. So in order for Bibi to be prime minister, he has to have 61 seats. And in the past few elections, the pro-Bibi have not been able to reach 61 seats, which has led us into this ongoing situation where we have vote after vote after vote. So the first one is relation to Bibi. The second issue has to do with the political situation, meaning the relation to the Palestinian conflict and the Palestinian state. Most Israelis agree that they do not at this point want to make any peace or state for the Palestinians. And the reason for this is because they feel that there's no partner on the other end to make peace with. The left wing, on the other hand, want this to happen, meaning want it to want to have some sort of partner or get a partner or make some sort of advancements in this arena. Whereas the right wing are okay with the way the situation is. There's no partner. The whole premise of giving them a state or giving away land is something that the right wing just doesn't agree with at all. So while actually they all agree that today there's just no peace process, there's nothing to work with. These are the differences and the right wing parties on this end could include the Likud, Israel Beitenu, the religious Zionism groups, and on the left we have the Labour Party, Ha'avodah, and Meretz, and Yeshatid. These are more leaning towards the left in this arena. Um, the Haredi parties, Shas and Yahadut Atara are more middle of the road. They don't really have an opinion on this. The third issue is the economic issue. And this is a huge problem that Israelis face today. If years ago with the same salary you were able to make ends meet today, the price of living has gotten so expensive that people are really having trouble making ends meet. Now the Israeli high-tech uh, sector is has very well-paid jobs relatively, so they do okay. But all the other sectors are really struggling and the worst out of all the economic issues is the housing crisis where people all want to buy, Israelis all want to buy houses and they're just not building enough and there's not enough housing. So this issue has to be solved according to many Israelis. Now, how do you solve these economic issues? Most Israelis agree with the social democratic, with the socialized system that we have today. And even people that say that they want to have a liberal system, at the same time, they are for all these socialized rules. Like I can say, oh, I want, I want things to be more liberal. I want to cut taxes. But at the same time, uh, giving up maternity leave, I'm not sure I want to do that. I, I like my maternity leave. So most people fall somewhere in the category where they want to have a socialized system but at the same time to have it as liberal as it can be so that we all are able to have low costs and high standard of living. So exactly how to do this is debatable and I don't think people really know what the way is. You kind of just go with a figure who tells you he's gonna solve that problem. You don't really, he doesn't really explain what exactly he's gonna do or you don't, we don't always understand even what exactly the, what the implications will be of a certain step. But we just know that 
the housing, the economic situation, the cost of living, these are situations we really need to solve. When it comes to economics, most of the parties are leaning somewhere towards the right. So we want to have some social uh, benefits and rulings, but we also want to have a more liberal system. On the left end of this, we do have Labor Party, Avoda, and Meretz who want more and more socialized, everything that is involved in it, with, if it has to do with the minimum wage and all these things, they are left-wing. But most Israelis fall somewhere in the line of the right-wing center is what we want. The last issue has to do with Jewish identity. How much do we want Israel to lean towards the Jewish end of the spectrum and how much do we want Israel to lean towards the democratic liberal state? So on one end of the Jewish identity spectrum, we have the ultra-Orthodox parties, which are sector parties. People tend to vote with their sector. If I'm an ultra-Orthodox Karedi living in Bnei Brak, I don't really have much of a choice which party I'm going to vote for. I tend to go with my sector. Same thing with the Arab parties. They tend to go with the Arab parties. Traditionally, they did, the Arabs did vote for the Labour Party, but over the last few years, they more and more vote for their sector. So on one end of the, on the religious Jewish identity, we have the ultra-Orthodox, we have Agudat Israel, Shas, and religious Zionism. They want more of a Jewish identity. So this means less public transportation on Shabbos, and they want to have uh, conversions um, and kashrut and dietary ruled by the state. The liberal end of the spectrum, Meretz and Israel Beitenu, Lieberman's party, they want to have marriage not through the Rabbanu. They want to have open conversions. The discussions also have to do with the ultra-Orthodox sector uh, and when it comes to them joining the army. A lot of people on the liberal end or in general feel like it's not fair that they don't do the army and they study in their yeshivot, and their yeshivot are funded a lot by the state. They just want to make Israel a liberal, democratic state where marriage is not a religious marriage, and there's public transportation on Shabbos, and we're not funding any Torah learning in yeshivot, and stuff like that. So this is a huge debate, and in fact, governments have fallen over the breaking of Shabbos and things like that. So these are major, major issues, especially to the ultra-Orthodox parties. So in my case as an Israeli, or if you were an Israeli, you would have to think, who do I vote for based on these four questions? How do I feel towards Bibi? Do I want Bibi to be the prime minister? If so, I would vote for either for Bibi or one of the parties that are openly supportive of Bibi. And if not, then I would have to vote for a party that claim that they will not sit with Bibi. They will not be one of his 61 needed for forming the government. Where do I stand in terms of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? And economically, do I tend to be more liberal or do I tend to be more on the left wing when it comes to economics? Again, most of the Israelis find themselves more leaning towards the right. And of course, Jewish identity. How much do I want Israel to be more Jewish as opposed to liberal and vice versa? Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. See you next time.